Have you ever noticed your shoulder becoming increasingly stiff over time? Maybe you're also dealing with severe pain that seems to come out of nowhere, making even the slightest of movements agonizing. If that sounds familiar, you might be dealing with adhesive capsulitis, better known as frozen shoulder. In this video, we're diving into this puzzling condition that still leaves researchers scratching their heads. We'll explore what it is, how long it lasts, and most importantly, how to treat it. Plus, we'll introduce a unique treatment approach that could be a game changer for those with stubborn cases of frozen shoulder. So stick around until the end to learn more. <laughs> For such a bizarre condition that many people haven't even heard of, frozen shoulder is surprisingly common, affecting about 2 to 5% of the population. It tends to appear most often in people between the ages of 40 to 60, and it's more likely to affect women than men. Unfortunately, if you have diabetes, your chances of developing frozen shoulder are even higher, with around 10 to 20% of diabetic populations experiencing it at some point. Other factors like thyroid disease or a history of shoulder surgery or injury can also increase your risk. But despite how common frozen shoulder is, the exact cause remains somewhat of a mystery. Researchers are still trying to pinpoint why it happens. But what we do know is that when you look closer at the shoulder of someone who has it, there are some pretty unusual things going on that might explain the intense pain and stiffness. When it comes to the pain experienced in those with frozen shoulder, researchers think it might be due to an out of control inflammatory response. This isn't just the run of the mill inflammation though. It's a specific type of inflammation called synovitis. Synovitis happens when the synovium, a thin tissue that lines the shoulder joint, becomes inflamed. Normally, the synovium produces a small amount of fluid that keeps the joint lubricated, allowing for smooth, pain-free movement. But when synovitis strikes, this process is completely disrupted, leading to swelling and severe pain, making even simple movements feel excruciating. This persistent pain is a major factor in why frozen shoulder can be tough to manage. And here's where things get even more interesting. Some experts believe that it's not just inflammation causing problems. Researchers have also seen evidence of new nerve growth in the shoulder's ligaments, which could be a big reason why pain can be so intense, even when you're just sitting still and not moving the shoulder at all. So the extra nerves might be amplifying the pain, and the reason why this condition can be so uncomfortable. But pain isn't the only symptom. Stiffness is actually the main hallmark sign of frozen shoulder. Because researchers also see an increase in blood vessel growth in the affected shoulder, a process called angiogenesis. As new blood vessels form, they supply the area with more blood. While this might seem helpful, the increased blood flow and new vessel formation exacerbates the inflammatory process, making the capsule thicker and more rigid. You see, the body normally heals by producing collagen, a protein that helps repair tissue. But in frozen shoulder, this process goes into overdrive, causing too much collagen to build up. This excess in collagen leads to fibrosis, where the joint capsule thickens and forms scar tissue. As the capsule tightens, it reduces the space in the joint, making movement painful and difficult. This cycle of stiffness and pain is what freezes the shoulder, leaving it stuck and uncomfortable. Why this happens isn't fully understood, but factors like diabetes or hormonal changes might play a role in making the body more prone to this excessive healing response. So you think you have frozen shoulder, but how can you be sure? Because with so many shoulder problems having pain, it can be a bit tricky to pinpoint what exactly is going on. So to add some clarity to a perplexing condition, let's break down some key signs and symptoms of frozen shoulder to help you determine if this might be the issue you're dealing with. Frozen shoulder often begins insidiously, meaning without any warning or reason. You might wake up one day with a nagging pain in your shoulder, or maybe you begin to notice it after something as simple as reaching back into the backseat of a car or brushing your hair. But what starts as mild discomfort can quickly escalate and turn into something that disrupts your sleep and daily activities over the next couple weeks. This isn't just any old pain either. It's often sharp or achy and tends to get worse with certain shoulder movements. You might even notice that simple actions, like reaching up to a high shelf or trying to tuck in your shirt, is becoming increasingly difficult due to pain. At this stage, many people are often misdiagnosed with subacromial impingement, another shoulder issue that shares similarities with the early stages of frozen shoulder. But what makes frozen shoulder really stand out, apart from other shoulder conditions, is its resistance to typical treatments that usually offer relief. The pain and stiffness persist despite resting, medication, and rehab exercises. And as the condition progresses, the shoulder becomes increasingly stiff, and movement becomes more and more challenging. This growing stiffness and the persistent nature of the symptoms are a strong indicator that you might be dealing with frozen shoulder. 
An orthopedic physical therapist or doctor will look for a few specific indicators to diagnose frozen shoulder. One major sign is a noticeable loss of shoulder motion. If you've got more than 25% reduction in shoulder movement in at least two different directions, and more than a 50% loss in external rotation compared to your other arm, you may be dealing with frozen shoulder. Another common sign is called the shrug sign, where you might find yourself shrugging your shoulder while trying to lift your arm overhead because of the shoulder stiffness. X-rays are typically used to rule out other conditions like arthritis that could be causing your shoulder pain and stiffness. They won't reveal, however, the soft tissue changes associated with frozen shoulder, such as capsule tightening. An MRI, on the other hand, is more detailed and can show thickening of the joint capsule and other soft tissue changes that come with frozen shoulder. However, imaging is often not needed because the diagnosis is clear enough based on a medical history and a comprehensive physical exam. By now, you might have a good sense of whether or not you're dealing with frozen shoulder. But the big question is, how long will this take to recover? And unfortunately, recovery from frozen shoulder is a bit of a journey, with several distinct stages, each bringing its own set of challenges and timeline. So let's dive into the different phases of frozen shoulder, what you can expect during each one, and how long this recovery process might take. In stage one, often called the pre-freezing phase, you might start to notice something's off. This stage can last up to three months and bring sharp pain when you push your shoulder to its limits and a constant ache even when you're resting, and trouble sleeping as well. You'll feel like your shoulder is inflamed, but there aren't any major restrictions in movement yet. At this point, it's very easy to mistake it for shoulder impingement since the shoulder doesn't seem too restrictive. Stage 2, known as the freezing stage, typically lasts between 3 to 9 months. Here, the pain intensifies and spreads, making movement in all directions more difficult. The inflammation becomes more pronounced and the capsule begins to contract, adding to its tightness. This stage is marked by increased stiffness, which starts to interfere more with your daily activities. In stage 3, what is known as the frozen stage, which can last from 9 to 15 months, you'll notice a shift. The pain may start to ease up a bit, but the shoulder remains stiff and the movement is significantly restricted. This stage is categorized by a buildup of fibrous tissue, leading to a major loss of flexibility. Although the pain might be lessened, the stiffness can be quite persistent, making it hard to regain full motion. Finally, stage 4, or the thawing stage, lasts from 15 to 24 months. In this phase, the pain generally starts to fade, but some stiffness may linger. The inflammation calms down, but the shoulder might not fully regain its range of motion right away, and may require specific exercises to restore it. And now it's important to note that this timeline can vary. Some people might see a quicker resolution of symptoms, while others, particularly those with an underlying condition that contributes to inflammation, such as diabetes, might experience a more prolonged recovery. So while these stages provide a general guide, everyone's experience can be a bit different. Okay, so you've figured out that you have frozen shoulder, but what should you do about it? Well, while a hot pack sounds like a good idea at this point, you're going to need more than a little heat to get this issue to melt away. So let's review the latest evidence-based treatments for frozen shoulder and what really works in reducing pain and restoring shoulder mobility. If you've done any browsing on the internet, you might have come across some videos promising a cure to frozen shoulder in just one session. While that sounds incredible, it's really not how life works. Because in understanding how frozen shoulder develops makes it clear that it doesn't just resolve with a single stretch or a quick massage. You're dealing with fibrotic changes in the joint's capsule after all. So if you've experienced what seemed like a miracle treatment, it's very likely that what you had was not frozen shoulder. And while the lack of a quick fix sounds like a big bummer, setting appropriate expectations is the first thing you need to do when dealing with frozen shoulder, because recovery is a bit of a long haul and you need to stay motivated. In the short term, the focus is primarily on managing pain and keeping whatever motion you have so that you can get through the day while the long-term goal is to steadily increase mobility of the shoulder to restore function. So let's start out by looking at the short term, managing pain. Since frozen shoulder is primarily an inflammatory issue, corticosteroids are often the first line of treatment. And I get it, nobody likes to rely on medications or injections unless absolutely necessary. But in this case, it's worth considering. Corticosteroid injections have some of the strongest evidence backing their effectiveness for frozen shoulder. The main goal of these injections is to reduce inflammation and ease pain. Research shows that they can provide almost immediate relief and help improve shoulder movement right after they're given. This is because early on, and frozen shoulder, pain and muscle tightness often restrict your shoulder's range of motion more than the actual fibrous tissue or adhesions do. And more pain means you're less willing to move your arm, which results in even more stiffness. 
So when used in combination with shoulder mobility and stretching exercises, these injections can offer better short-term relief, typically within the first four to six weeks of onset compared to just doing exercises alone. So if you're dealing with frozen shoulder, corticosteroid injections combined with physical therapy could be a strategic approach to getting you back on track. There are also other ways to manage pain that doesn't involve medications that can be useful. The use of heat and electrical modalities can offer some short-term relief. Heating pads, for example, can help soothe sore muscles and relax tight areas, making your shoulder feel a bit more comfortable. While electrical modalities like TENS, which stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, work by sending electrical impulses to the affected area, helping to override pain signals going to your brain. While these treatments will not resolve the issue of frozen shoulder, they can definitely play a supportive role in helping keep pain at bay while you perform more active treatments. Other treatments such as massage and joint mobilizations, as well as stretching exercises, have also been shown to help manage pain and support the overall recovery process in those with frozen shoulder. Joint mobilization is a technique where a physical therapist gently moves and manipulates your shoulder joint to improve its range of motion. The aim is to loosen up your joint, reduce stiffness, and gradually restore your ability to move comfortably. Alongside this, stretching exercises help ease pain and improve mobility by gently stretching the muscles and tissues around your shoulder. And when paired with deep breathing, you can better relax your muscles and improve the effectiveness of your stretches. Because when you're calm and breathing deeply, your muscles are more receptive to stretching, allowing for a more effective and less painful stretch. Together, these methods work to get you moving more freely and with less discomfort. But it's important to use joint mobilizations and stretching strategically. While the idea is to gradually increase your flexibility, pushing too aggressively or stretching too far can do the opposite. Going excessively beyond your pain limits during stretching can cause more irritation and stiffness. The key is to match the intensity of your stretches to your shoulder's level of irritation. If your shoulder is highly irritated, start with gentle stretches and gradually build up as your pain decreases. But if the stretch is not too bad, feel free to push it a bit harder to get more out of it. It's all about finding that sweet spot where you're challenging your shoulder just enough to make progress without pushing it into more pain. This approach allows your shoulder to recover at its own pace, reducing the risk of setbacks and helping you make steady improvements over time. But what do you do when your shoulder is so stiff and painful that you just can't take it anymore? And despite all of your best efforts, cortisone shots, physical therapy, and stretching, nothing seems to work. Well, there might be another treatment option that could really make a difference in your pain and lack of shoulder mobility brought on by frozen shoulder. You might have heard of a manipulation under anesthesia, where a patient is under full anesthesia and the shoulder is forcefully moved to break up adhesions and improve range of motion. Manipulation under anesthesia is often considered for extremely stiff and painful shoulders, usually due to a condition like frozen shoulder, especially when other treatments have not worked. So what exactly happens under a standard manipulation. Well, the process starts with you being under full anesthesia, meaning you're completely unconscious and won't feel anything. Once you're out, your orthopedic surgeon will move your shoulder through its full range of motion. And this isn't just a gentle stretch. The aim is to break up the adhesions and scar tissue around the shoulder joint by forcefully moving the shoulder. Yeah, not the most elegant procedure ever performed. And I totally understand if you're hesitant about letting a doctor tug on your shoulder like it's an MMA fight. While manipulation under anesthesia can be effective, it definitely carries risks. There's a chance of damaging the joint or surrounding tissues. Common risks include fracture, tearing of the rotator cuff, or damage to the labrum and ligaments. But thankfully, there's a more gentle approach called translational manipulation under anesthesia. This technique is gaining attention as a potentially safer and more effective alternative to traditional manipulation. Instead of forcefully moving the entire shoulder joint, translational manipulation involves a more precise and gentle movement. The procedure begins with an interscalene brachial plexus block, a type of local anesthesia that numbs the shoulder area. Once the patient is relaxed and pain-free, the manipulation starts. In translational manipulation, a two person team often performs the procedure. One person stabilizes the shoulder blade, while the other performs controlled, gentle movements to glide the shoulder joint in specific directions. This method targets the tight, stiff tissues that are restricting movement, aiming to improve range of motion without the same level of risk associated with more aggressive manipulations. Many patients report immediate increases in their shoulder's range of motion, and a noticeable decrease in pain right after the procedure. Translational manipulation under anesthesia offers a less aggressive option compared to traditional manipulation with the potential for significant improvements in the shoulder mobility and pain reduction without the risks. However, it's worth noting that translational manipulation isn't as commonly performed as traditional manipulations, partly due to a lack of widespread training in this technique. Nonetheless, I suggest investigating your area to see if there's any surgeons or physical therapists in the area that does this procedure. And if you found value from this video, don't forget to give it a like 
And as always, subscribe to the channel so you can learn more about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.